was abused by my father for a number of years. I am not sure exactly how many. Till now I remember at night waking up when the door to my bedroom would open and he would crawl on the floor and put his hands underneath my blankets and my covers. And things like that would happen very often. The things that he was doing to me affected me in a way that I felt ugly. I didn't want to be a girl. My name is Zen Kataf, and this is my forgiveness story. I live in Australia, but I was born in Poland, in a small village in the north side of the country. I grew up in a small family, my parents and my brother and myself. My mom was really loving and kind, always busy in the kitchen, cooking lovely cakes. My dad, on the other hand, was really cold. I would say not very nice, horrible man. My father was very controlling. Um, he always wanted to have things his way. We have to be silent when he was watching television. But that wasn't the worst things that was happening in my household. The horrible things that the most impacted me as a child, it was a sexual abuse. I was abused by my father for a number of years. Till now I remember at night waking up when the door to my bedroom would open and he would crawl on the floor and put his hands underneath my blankets and my covers. I remember the first instances of sexual abuse, of touching me um, inappropriately, probably from age about five years old till probably my early years of being a teenager. At that point, I was more aware of what was happening to me. I would wear jeans and oversized shirts just to try to be less visible for him. And I was hoping that he won't notice me and then he won't come again and again to my bedroom. Very often I tried to go to bed the latest that I could because I didn't want to fall asleep because I was worried that again he will come to my bedroom. Over the years, I grew like this hatred in my heart towards him. I don't even want to call him father because I don't think he deserves to be called father. I grew up as an angry teenager, very rebellious. I never told anybody what happened to me because I knew my mom wouldn't believe me. I knew that I was leaving my mom and how she could live with him, I don't know, because he, he as well was really disgusting. The way how he was talking to my friends and looking at them and my aunties, he would always try to inappropriately touch them. And I don't know how my mom stayed with him for so many years. As you can imagine, it was, it was a terrible thing to have to admit to yourself that you know, the, the father, the one that's supposed to protect 
uh, to reinforce and, and, and grow you and, and, and smother you with love was abusing you sexually, it was crazy. And um, it took a while to digest, even for me to digest. So I was holding all these horrible feelings inside of my heart, a guilt and shame. Going out, hanging out with men who were much older than me, maybe 10, 12 years older, because they could look after me, make me feel a bit better about myself. At the age of 19, when I finished my college, I got into a relationship with a grown-up man because I was looking for somebody that could replace the father that I never had. But there was always void, there was always a gap, even in a relationship with a much older man, I would feel and nothing could replace perhaps the love that I was longing for. I was changing relationship with men from one to another, never feeling any fulfillment. I got into drinking alcohol and even taking some drugs. There were so many years, I've done it, so many wrong things. All those things were impacting me and making me really dry and horrible inside of myself. I grew up as a Catholic, as a believer. Deeply, I always believed in God, I always believed in Jesus. Though I never had close relationship, I knew that there is, there is God. And something spoke to my heart. And I thought, there is God that perhaps will want to have me. So I sat down on the floor and I just spoke, can I come back to Jesus? perhaps loves me as I am. And what did he do? He said yes. <laughs> he not only said yes, but he waited for me. He just embraced me and loved me. So I started going to church, going to mass. So I was reading, reading some good books, start reading verses. And then I met my husband-to-be, Gary, and our, I think, story just began. Gary had an amazing conversion story a couple of years earlier, before we met. He wanted to be received in Catholic Church. So when he was learning about a Christian faith and then Catholic faith, I was renewing my faith. I was finding a new way. I was finding a God who really loves me, who wants to bless me and give me everything that I need. He drew me so close to himself that when I built my personal relationship with Jesus, when I talked to him every morning and every night, he gently directed me to God the Father. And even if I fall, even Thank if I you. sin, He leads me we are in debt. to forgiveness. And not only that, He says that I forgive, but also forget the things. So I start building up relationship with God the Father, getting closer to God, get involved in prayer ministry and prayer group. After my third daughter was born, Amelia, there was a certain circumstance that just happened that has brought all my experiences back to life. I found myself in a place when I was relieving the abuse. So that's probably 30 years, 25, 30 years later. I seek help from Christian counselor. I seek help from prayer groups to help me to, to deal with the staff and I knew that God is asking me into a time of 
dealing with my past. I felt that deep in my heart that God was leading me and asking me to forgive my dad. I wasn't ready. I wasn't prepared for it. I didn't think he deserved forgiveness for all the things that he's done to me, for all the abuse over the years when I was a little girl, when he's supposed to look after me, care for me and love me. He never did that and then he abused me and he caused my life to go in a direction that probably would be different if I wasn't abused. How could I forgive that man? How could I? I couldn't. I couldn't forgive him, but God could help me to do it. I think my role was to be there as a witness to what she had suffered, to hear her pain, to allow her to, to pour out the suffering and recognise as God does, the gravity of what has happened to her. And then to, to witness her choice to forgive, to support her choice to forgive, and to pray with her in that space. I start doing lots of research about forgiveness and finding different speakers talking about forgiveness and reading books and reading so many scriptures about forgiveness and what God says about forgiveness. And I know now the forgiveness is not a feeling, it's a decision. You make a decision to do it. Each time I was trying, I couldn't find even right words to say it. And one day I read this scripture from 2 Corinthians 2 verse 10. If you forgive anyone, I forgive them. I forgive them for your sake. I couldn't believe it, the verse, and I'm like, how can I, how can you forgive him, even if he doesn't ask you? If he doesn't come to God and ask him for forgiveness? I couldn't grasp this. Forgiveness is a really hard decision to make. When we have been wounded that much in our lives that we need to forgive somebody, often the only thing we feel we have to hold on to is our ability to forgive or not forgive. That's justice, you know, especially if that person has never apologised, never acknowledged the wrong that they have done to us. What else do we have to hold on to our pride, our dignity in this situation when someone can degrade us in such a way? So our power to forgive, we instinctively hold on to, we grip hard. This, this is what's keeping me together, if you like. And the world around us encourages that, I think. It's countercultural to forgive, to let go, to seemingly let go of my rights in any situation like this. And I really felt that God is saying to me, I think you should go back to Poland and see your dad face to face. You know, she developed in her faith as we grew together. She decided on her own, I need to go to Poland and forgive him. So I said, oh, just, just ring. She said, no, I need to do it in person. I was like, wow, that's braver than me, <laughs> you know? And I went to Poland and went to church where there was the Holy Communion happening. Sat down in bench and Gary sat next to me. And then I saw my mom and she came and she sat next to me. And I could feel it, my heart beeping, like so hard inside of me. And I was so scared to look into that man's eyes. And I lift up my head and there was a beautiful picture of divine mercy. And I look at Jesus and he just looked at me and like, I felt that he was saying, you can do it. So I took a deep breath and then suddenly my dad came across and just passed me, passed my mom and sat on the other side of my mom. And then I felt I can't do it. 
And I look again up, and Jesus was there. He was always there supporting me. And I don't know where he came from, but I just got this strength, and I just turned towards my dad. I look at him, and I said, hi. And I look into his eyes, and I said, I came here to tell you that I have forgiven you. And I turned my head the other way, and that was it. I never said my big speech. I never told him how much he hurt me and what he did to me. I never used any of words that I prepared it. But when I look up at Jesus, he was smiling. And I felt his love surrounding me, like the rays that coming out of his heart and enveloped me and hugged me. And I felt that he was proud of me. And in that moment, the scripture that I just read made sense. The, if I forgive my dad, he will forgive him for my sake, not for anybody else's. And I was able to leave my dad in God's hands. And all that shame and guilt, all the things that I did wrong in my life over that moment was gone. Everything that I carried for so many years in silence, Jesus took away. But that was the moment that he made me free. It's not the other person we're letting off scot free. It's actually ourselves we're cutting free from the situation and free from where they've bogged us down. By choosing to forgive them, we let them go to God and ourselves are freed to move on from the situation. We can only do it with God's grace and by His grace we can then rise above and move on, find freedom. I just want to reinforce the courageous act that Zenka did in forgiving her father and I think she's very brave and and, and as I said, courageous for the act of forgiveness that she's shown towards her father. It was the most uncomfortable feeling I can remember. It might have probably happened to me in my life, but as soon as she said that, the hand stopped trembling. She turned to me with a big, big smile, huge smile, that she confronted her abuser, who happened to be her father. Zenka made this journey each time in a really beautiful and deep way. She was not afraid of facing the pain and she didn't rush into what she was doing blindly. She let the Lord show her the fullness of what needed to be forgiven. She mourned and she made a deliberate decision to hand it over to him and choose forgiveness. She was very courageous and I really honour her for the way that she's consistently done this in many situations in her life. I don't have to have relationship with that just because I have forgiven him. But I am free of that bondage because Jesus set me free. You are able to then expand your heart, love others, because his ultimate sacrifice on the cross is that ultimate love, unconditional. The healing process now must begin. And so we went on this healing journey together. Our face deepened, many, many tears, some arguments. It, was, uh, it went on for a while, but things started to get better. And the healing, like any wound, it takes a while to heal. I have still memories, and there are still pains, and there are still grief from things, but they don't carry the same emotional attachment they used to and they are not burden. There are things that I can share just to show God's victory and give glory to Him for that. How much He loved me no matter what, no matter how broken I was. He was able to turn all that and bring joy above all in my life. Joy that I could then move forward not worrying anymore about my past.